because they're feeling that void of like, how do you educate children who can't physically go into the classroom? How do you take care of elders so that they make sure they have their medicine or their insulin? And, you know, keeping the family structure intact. That kind of feminized labor occurs inside of prisons. Like who is taking care of the incarcerated who are in hospice? Who is taking care of the incarcerated who gets sick? and have to be nursed, right? Who is giving emotional care so that they don't break down into psychosis, right? This unpaid labor is part of the accumulation extracted by corporations. So I think of it as the captive maternal. And when I think of Attica, again, I'm going back to the 50th anniversary, there were the trustees, they reproduced the prison on the level of caretaking labor. Then they transition to being protesters, saying we are humans, we are not slaves, you can't treat us as such. Then they built a maroon you know, camp inside of prison when they became a human rights crusade and decided, here's the medic tent, here's the political education, you talk to the New York Times, Tom Wolfe, you see if you can get Huey Newton or Bobby Sill over to visit, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then the state replied, as if it were war with the National Guard as violence. So I see these cycles as encircling labor. If you refuse to work, you can be put in solitary, you can be denied access to commissary, you can be penalized with more days or time in prison, right? You can be written up. So the violence is embedded in that, but also back to the agency of the incarcerated. Their love and caretaking for each other creates communities that become stable within predatory zones. So if I were to think about how you approach this, it can't be on a traditional labor issue of exploited worker. It has to recognize the human who is operating within the realm of captivity, the violence arrayed against them. And also we've not talked about the drug economy in prison. We've not talked about sex trafficking in prison and rape. We've not talked about how the guards attained middle-class status or bourgeois lifestyles the same way covenant prison leasing guards and sheriffs did in the police apparatus after the Civil War. There is accumulation that's not just by the corporations or the state, but also by a whole employment sector, you know, called corrections. And the labor that is put forward is really complex and and multi-layered. And in order to recognize how much they risk when they go on strike, we would also have to think of them as more than workers, as people who love families, who love their cellmates, who recreate family inside of prison. And that's what we should be accountable to on the outside. 